everyone, this is a podcast Hap Talks. I'm like this very episode's host, Shrigla Sagunbekova. And today we have an amazing guest. Her name is Sarika Batra, if I pronounce yes, it correctly. Yes, perfect. Yeah, <laughs> media executive, producer. Um, you are running for Mid the Draper show for like six years. Six years. And she's going to tell us about her experience. So, um, and today, I remind you again, this is a podcast, Hub Talks. Subscribe to Astana Hub's YouTube channel and other like social media. Keep in touch. <laughs> so we are like currently recording this very uh, episode at the Digital Bridge Forum 2023. We just had Meet the Drapers episode recorded just, yes. just now. <laughs> yes, it was super exciting. And thank you for having me here, by the way. Of yes. course. And thank you for being with us. Thank you for visiting Kazakhstan. And welcome to Kazakhstan. Thank sure. you. The yeah. people here are very sweet, by the way. It's one of the most, be the most beautiful people I've ever met in my life. From the heart... And obviously from the face. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Thank you. And we are so glad to have an amazing um, guest like you. And um, let me like go, st like get straight to the point, right? Because we're <laughs> like short in time here. But anyway, uh, could you please tell me the very first question is going to be, how often do you use the AI in your daily work? You so, use it? so that's a good and interesting question because AI is all the buzz right now. and. Um, there's been a lot of talk about how AI is going to disrupt media and protests around the world in this space. Sure. But um, in our work, I'll tell you where we use it. It's not disrupting jobs quite yet. Yeah. But we use it for to translate our episodes, for example. We used to have actual translators. Now with AI, we translate one episode into several different languages. We use it in our edit. Um, the AI will go through and make sure that the sound and audio is corrected and listen for any inflections. Mm -hmm. um, I have to admit, I do kind of use chat GPT for some of my social posts. <laughs> and, <laughs> and the other day we were trying to brainstorm a tagline for one of our shows on Draper TV. I said, let's just ask chat GPT. It's become a friend. Um, so that's probably the way we're using AI currently the most. Oh, I see. Uh, actually, I mean, I, I, I also use ChatGPT. It helped me to, uh, you know, come up with this question. So yeah. it's they're, all fun. They're great questions. <laughs> they're great questions, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, like, okay, this is going to be off top question, but I'm going to ask. Do you like when you talk to ChatGPT, when you message it, mm -hmm. do you like uh, say it in like, I don't know, uh, how can I say, maybe not formal, but friendly way? Yes. Like, yeah, yeah. Yes. Like, <laughs> hey, <laughs> can you tell me what this is? Please. I mean, ChatGPT has basically become a friend, a companion to everyone. Sure. More of an assistant. Sure. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So, um, my another question, it goes to the Meet the Draper show, like, mm -hmm. itself. Do you plan to have an AI host for the Meet the Draper show, by the way? So, it's interesting that you ask that question because we're currently in the process of creating an AI-generated Tim Draper. Um, but we're not going to use it. We're not going to use him on Meet the Drapers. Uh, we are launching a new network called Draper TV, oh my God. and there's going to be a show on it where Tim every day gives daily updates on what's happening in entrepreneurship around the world. People can ask um, Tim live questions, and it's the AI version of Tim. So stay tuned for that. Oh my goodness! <laughs> uh, will the AI Tim use the magic ball? Good question. Well, I wonder if the magic ball is actually smarter than Chat GPT. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> so true. Yeah. Oh, this is amazing. Okay, so yeah, keep on touch. Okay, so my another question goes to um, like I uh, will call to your like personal opinion. Yeah, your personal thoughts. Uh, many people are like worried that AI will replicate human creativity. Uh, we just talked to you to you about that it mostly like assistant yeah it helps us because in my case it really um you know get rid of like daily routine but so like will ai replace us or is it a more a tool to enhance human creativity what do you think that's an interesting question and sure. and many people have a different frame of yeah. thought on that question some will say absolutely yes i personally don't think so i think it's going to replace a certain to up to a certain level but genius is genius, and that comes from a deep place of emotion. And artists and their creativity, are, they're coming, it's coming from their personal experience. Yes, you can say that with time, AI will get smarter and smarter and smarter and be able to replicate that experience, but AI is grabbing information from the masses. 
And so it'll eventually become something that it's not going to be extraordinary because extraordinary is not the general public. It's a percentage of the population. And genius does not come from from a gathering of information. It comes from true emotion and it comes from true experience. So I don't think that's going to go away. There's no way, in my opinion. But I totally agree with your opinion, you know, yeah. because, and I do love how you described it, that it gets, like, the emotion. Not many people talk about emotion. And actually, it's a really important part of human, like, of humankind, I could say. So everyone needs to, in order to combat what AI is going to do to our world, people need to bring out their personal extraordinary. I see. Because the mundane tasks, like a mundane social media post, yes, that could get replaced by AI, and it already is. Sure. But the extraordinary never will. So people need to go dig deep inside and find their extraordinary. Everyone has it. I see. Thank you. This is an amazing answer, by the way. <laughs> so um, now my question goes, like, I will call to your memory. Yeah, you run the Mid the Draper show for the last six years. Yes. And so here is my question. Uh, if you remember, of course. If you do not, it's all fine. Uh, do you remember the very first, like, AI project that came up to the Meet the Draper oh. show, or, or not? If it's not, it's yeah. fine. Um, the very first one? No. no I, but I, yeah. It's okay. Yeah, no, but you know, lately we've been getting quite a lot of AI based. Or maybe there was a shoe company on season one that used AI to determine what shoe would be better for what person. Amazing. Yes. In, in season one. I think that may have been our first company. I can't even remember the name of the company, to be honest with you, but I think that was our first company using AI. Oh, my God. Yeah. So it was six years ago, right? Yes, yes. I see. <laughs> yeah. I see. And another my question is, uh, maybe, like, among the last projects, uh -huh. uh, which, you know, were AI-driven, mm -hmm. maybe there was the one which you remembered, like, clearly, which impressed you. Oh gosh, so you know, there's been quite a few impressive sure. AI projects. Um, you know, today we saw four amazing entrepreneurs from Kazakhstan. So if I have to go based on my most recent memory, um, I have to say that AI was used in almost all of them sure. in a different way, yeah. which was interesting. I, I tended to like teen tech because I felt like they were using AI to solve a very good cause, mm -hmm. like to match university students with um, the universities and to figure out the right placement. Because sometimes we just go to universities based on our, the, the society told us or our parents told us or some random counselor told us. But they have taken so many, so much data from around the world and so much information and different parameters sure. to actually specifically match what's right for you. Sure. So you don't end up in a university and based on what your counselor, one person told you or your parents, you end up where you truly belong. So I thought that was a good social good use for AI, and that impressed me. Those entrepreneurs impressed me. That, yeah, it's true. All today, yeah. it was crazy. Okay. Well, thank you. Now we know the But history. I did hear of a product that I thought was really cool in the AI space yeah. that's coming out where um, it's um, you can wear it and it will detect based on information gathering in AI today in 10 years what diseases you may have based on how things are changing in your body type and i think that's super interesting um i would use that product like it will tell you like okay if you're prone to parkinson's it will know if you're already headed that way by slight inflections in in your in the way you're walking or speaking that you can't even detect a doctor can't even detect yeah. right now but it'll yeah. tell you hey you know what like take these precautions because perhaps in 10 15 years you may end up with Parkinson's because your your slight the way you're walking or speaking or starting to move is detecting it. Oh my God, I, I'm yeah. not I'm not yeah. sure if I use it or not. Yeah, I think I know because maybe it would make us all paranoid. What if it's not true? Who knows? But anyway, I thought that was an interesting use of AI that was um, preventative. Yeah, and for wellness and changing our lifestyle and everyone's into longevity these days, and so it might be a good use of AI. Yeah, exactly. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah but I still don't know. Maybe. <laughs> Please uh, write in the comments if you use such kind of tool. Yeah. <laughs> right? Well, personally, I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I need to think on it. Okay, so um, there is like now, you've been working in media for a really long time, right? Because I just observed you for the last couple of days and I really, 
you know, it, it, it engaged me so much, and I admire oh. how, how you're professional, and I love it, and you're always like very calm. Oh, I really? really love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I mean, the last couple of days, you were in a like, new country that you've never been to, and you're like, okay, let's have a solution, let's have this. And um, here I go again you. to your like uh, experience. Uh, what do you think, like, can AI assist in predicting trends and maybe like consumer uh, uh, consumer pre preferences in the creative market? Like, oh yeah, I mean, in fact, sometimes I think about you know our process of um, to Meet the Drapers is a is a VC driven show, yeah. so we go through two three hundred applications, sometimes more, sometimes five six hundred applications per country per region before we select our four winners. And sometimes I feel like, what if we just, AI helped us predict who was gonna win? And I wanted to see if that is actually who won. Were those the four the judges picked or did AI pick the same four? Or did they have a better selection? Does it match what Tim Draper would have invested in? So in the VC world, this could be very interesting to see, help predict who's gonna win or what entrepreneur has the greatest chance of success in the future. In the creative world, you know, I've always worked in unscripted television. Mm -hmm. So I can see how it would help in scripted television. But again, it's not going to replace the extraordinary. Sure. There's no way. So again, my advice again to everyone in this new world of AI is to bring out your personal extraordinary. Oh, yeah. So lovely. <laughs> okay. So, um, and what do you think, like, are there, are there any challenges in integrating AI into the creative workflow? and how they like can be addressed. Oh, there's a lot of, uh, how, integrating AI into the creative workflow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it, AI is more of a tool, and I don't, I haven't been able to foresee any real challenges quite yet in it working as a tool, not in replacing what the, what's currently there. But as a tool, it's helping along the process, for sure. Especially, like I mentioned earlier, in our editing, when translating translating our shows to different languages, which is really cool. We have a virtual Tim. I mean, it's not like we can record Tim every day giving updates, but now the AI-generated Tim, based on his brain and his knowledge, will come up with cool things to say to everyone every day. So that's interesting, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But um, it's more as a tool of that's bringing things along and actually enhancing the world's experience. I see. Yeah, I mean, I used to work also like in public relations, right? And mm -hmm. recording your like CEO every day, it, it, it's kind of a challenge. Yeah, so. they're not available. No. <laughs> so that so that's why they are CEOs, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And my like actually very last question is about like ethical considerations mm -hmm. with using AI. Mm -hmm. Because there are many discussions on that. Oh, right? yeah. Oh, yeah. there are Especially many. in Hollywood. Oh, yeah. I mean, there was the big strike that just happened because um, studios were signing off that they could use your image mm -hmm. um, for something else, your AI-generated image for uh, maybe some ads or other movies or other films. Yeah. And that makes actors very, very upset, obviously, rightfully so. And I think that I do think there's going to be, with any new emerging technology, something so powerful like AI, we are going to run into that in, in different areas. Um, is it ethical to take someone's image and, and create an AI-generated version that speaks like them, thinks like them, talks like them, and use it in, an, in another film? I don't personally think that's ethical. No. Um, but I know on the flip side, um, studios and filmmakers are looking, all, they're always looking at cost and budgets. But there's something to be said about the respect for a human being and their talent and their art. So I think that there's going to be bumps in the road along the way and we'll have to figure things out. There's going to be protests and strikes and people angry and eventually we'll come to a place that hopefully works for everyone. Yeah, yeah you're so right because even though yeah. if like the TV show, yeah, right, or like the episodes change the leading actor, I mean, people like might get crazy about that. And like here when you, while using AI, it, like, Oh my God, this is, I do believe this is some kind of like new challenge probably that we people didn't face before. Right. Now we're like, oh, what do we have to do with it? <laughs> I know, it'll, AI is here to stay. And look, it's gonna change our world. Sure. There's gonna be some bumps along the way. There's definitely gonna be people that push, um, push boundaries and there's definitely gonna be um, AI used in a very unethical way. Sure. However, I also think there's gonna be good that comes out of it, just like anything. And there's and hopefully those bumps smooth along and we start to see more good. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, now we're like 
we uh, that that was very last question. Thank you for the attention again. Sure. I'd like yeah. to ask you. I'd like first of all thank you. Because, of course. No, yeah, thank no. you for having me. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you're welcome. That's <laughs> such a busy day, but we still found the time, and yes. you still like could find the time. It's really amazing. And the um, I'd like to ask you uh, to tell maybe some wishes to the viewers, to the people who will see it. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Especially like uh, maybe for those who work in creative uh, industry, what like maybe some kind of career wish that you would like to tell them? Career advice? Yeah, career advice. Yeah. yeah. So look, the creative industry is a long journey. It took me it took me a while to find my foothold. You have to keep going. That's my biggest advice. And don't do something for the immediate result. Do something for the larger picture. Like, what are you waking up in the morning for? What is the thing that's engaging you? Um, what's giving you purpose? What's giving you fulfillment? Focus on that, not your immediate, I, I want to become, hurry up and become famous or rich or, um, because that's the wrong thing to attach yourself to. You should attach yourself to a larger purpose, a larger vision and then just keep at it, keep at it. Right when you feel like giving up, there'll be something small that happens that makes you realize you need to keep at it. Pivot where needed, but don't stop is my greatest advice. Okay, well, thank you so much again. And uh, yeah, thank you all for listening us and watching us. And I do believe there will be way, ma way more podcasts from the Digital Bridge Forum like 2023. So keep in touch, bye-bye. Yeah, thank you, bye-bye. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.